We've just gone past uh, midday, so I think we should probably uh, get started. If you could all please uh, mute yourselves. We don't have this on the presentation mode, so we'll be giving Q&A at the end. But please uh, try and mute yourselves for the course of the presentation. We'll get a lot of opportunity to speak and ask questions later in the session. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which uh, we meet. I'm calling from uh, the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, I would pay my respects to elders past, present, emerging. Send that to uh, any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders uh, calling us in here today. And uh, welcome you all to today's session. My name is Brendan Elliott. I'm from uh, Investment New South Wales, uh, part of the New South Wales government. I'm joined today by Tamara Ogilvie, who'll be speaking to the Oz Industry Entrepreneurs Program, uh, uh, brought to you by uh, in conjunction with CSIRO there. Uh, and today, the topic of today's discussion is connecting businesses with research and a couple of grants that we have to support that. We have tremendous uh, entrepreneurs in Australia. We have tremendous researchers who've done amazing research, uh, cochlear implants, Wi-Fi, group solar cells and all the rest. But we haven't always been able to connect them as effectively as we would like to. We think there's a great opportunity to do more. And these grants that we'll be talking to you about today will hopefully do just that. Uh, so what's going to happen is I'm going to do a 15-minute presentation around the uh, tech vouchers, the COVID-19 edition of tech vouchers on behalf of New South Wales government. Tamara will take over and do the same for the Innovation uh, Connections Grant from the federal government. And then we will have a uh, bit of a Q&A session at the end. We have said we'll go to 12.45, but if there's a lot of questions, a lot of engagement, we might stay around a little bit longer if any of you would like to. But the, you know, the bulk of the information, everything will be delivered in the next uh, half hour or so. And... So if you need a bit of extra time back in your day, uh, you can jump off the end. We are recording today's session. So if there are any particular parts or anything you may have missed or wish to pass on to your colleagues and things, we'll do our best to make that available to you afterwards. Uh, if you have questions throughout uh, the presentation, uh, you know, don't unmute yourselves, but put them in the chat, certainly. So if we see any questions that we can answer as we're going through the presentation, maybe drill a little bit further down on one or two topics, we see that come up in the chat, we will try and answer them on the fly. If not, we will get to the end and do that lovely Q&A session for you. Without further ado, I will begin with the COVID-19 edition of Tech Vouchers. This is a program that is currently open. We have a prospective close date of basically a month's time, October 29th. Uh, we have funding to support somewhere between 40 and 60 projects. It's on a bit of a first come first serve basis. So uh, you know, please don't delay. If the funding runs out before October 29th, we will close early but there's still plenty of opportunity for companies and everything to apply now. And hopefully with the information from today's session, you'll be in a good position to do so. To begin, what is a tech voucher? Basically, it's a match funded grant to support uh, startups or SMEs to collaborate with publicly funded research organizations on R&D projects with the intent of commercializing uh, some uh, innovative uh, products and or services. Basically, when a company goes to a research organization, we'll cover those off in a sec, which ones are covered, and you know whether it's uh, access to facilities, access to researchers, maybe clinical trials or something like that, uh, the New South Wales government will pay a grant of up to 50% of the cost from that uh, research project. Uh, you know, we'll start with the invoices from the, uh, from the research organisation, um, up to a total of, we'll pay out a maximum of $50,000 on a $100,000 project. Anything less than that, 50% of cost, pay out the grant in two milestones. Um, first milestone, if you're accepted by the grant, it is a little bit uh, there is an assessment process. We'll pay up to 50% of the first uh, uh, value of the first invoice. You'll have paid the invoice first, then we basically rebate it. And then we'll pay a second one at the end when the project has been completed. And you've shown us uh, results of that project and piece there. We said COVID-19 edition of tech vouchers. This is part of a broad COVID stimulus uh, package. What does that mean? It does not simply mean it's all medical devices, medical treatments that can cure or you know, alleviate the issues around COVID, though of course we will welcome those. COVID has a variety of impacts around the direct health impacts, broader wellbeing impacts, mental health and the like. And then also it has had a lot of economic impacts. A lot of industries around uh, you know, tourism, retail and all the rest have been impacted. So if you are, have a project in mind that will help you, uh, you know, deliver an innovative product or services that can help or alleviate in one of these sectors. And you can make the argument that uh, this will either, you know, cure the immediate, you know, help the immediate effects of COVID themselves, the broader economic impacts, and that as New South Wales responds, uh, recovers, and then grows beyond the COVID era, that this is a really important thing that will be a driver. 
that can all be uh, sort of considered. So, you know, we're not being prescriptive and saying these are the only things that we think are important, uh, you know, in uh, to respond or in a post-COVID world or anything else. Um, we're open. So if you can make the argument of the importance about response and recovery, health, wellbeing, economic impacts, then it can be considered. I mentioned publicly funded research organisations. Um, we've opened things up. So if it's New South Wales University, if it's any research organisation, that has an office for a presence in New South Wales uh, that receives public funds, it can be considered. So that's all the universities. I'm sure we've got plenty online today. You know, Macquarie, Southern Cross, Sydney, UNSW, UTS, all of those sorts. Also, organisations like the CSIRO, ANSTO, the National Measurement Institute, or even uh, other medical research institutes and private institutes that might receive uh, public funding. Uh, if you have a project in mind, but you aren't sure of the, you don't have a partner sort of lined up, you can contact us and we'll do our best to try and find a suitable partner for you. But otherwise, if you've got something in mind, we welcome your application. Uh, also, if you are not sure if an organisation counts as a PFRO, you can also ask. So, what activities can a tech voucher be used for? Anything from access to the uh, facilities, equipment, production of uh, laboratory prototypes, access to expertise and de design and development. A lot of this might sound with the laboratories and all the rest, but it might just be physical and manufactured products and things like that. That is not the case. We have, uh, you know, if you have access to great artificial intelligence researchers or developers and things like that, we absolutely can cover software, digital solutions and all the rest. If you uh, see an opportunity to, uh, you know, to do an R&D project with the university, a lot of this sort of stuff will be covered there. Software, hardware, that's all there. Eligibility criteria. So we're looking for businesses we have been in operation for at least 12 months. We judge that by the registration of the ABN, so that's important. We're also looking for businesses that, uh, you know, is a reasonable level of activity or maturity where they've, they can show us that they've made at least $150,000 in rev sales revenue or expenditure in either the previous 12 months or the most recent sort of financial year there. To also, you know, that's also there. But, you know, if you're a deeper tech, it's going to take a long time to sort of, you know, a lot longer time to get to market, but you have been active, you have been spending a lot, that can be covered there too. Again, the New South Wales government grant, so of course we're looking for those New South Wales ABMs to support, it's intended to support SMEs, not large, uh, you know, large 500 plus employees. So if you've got less than 200 employees, your SME, you can go for this grant. Uh, we're looking for projects, or at least parts of projects with a maximum of sort of 12 months there. We're also looking for companies which are at least 75% Australian owned or Australian residents for tax purposes. So not overseas companies, not overseas subsidiaries. Equally, we uh, don't want the company to be owned by, you know, have more than 50% ownership by another com uh, company. So if it's a small research subsidiary of a much larger company that doesn't fit this eligibility criteria, we won't consider that. So, you know, if you have a parent company and a couple of subsidiaries, the parent company should be the one that's applying there. Uh, match funding, as we said, we are paying up to 50% of the grant. So obviously, you as the company or the applicant will have to uh, pay the other 50% uh, or more of the cost of the research project so that the research organisation and the work and the researchers and facilities get paid for. Finally, when you are applying to us with the tech voucher, we do want a quote from the PFRO, uh, you know, if you have a variation agreement or something else, but basically we want a quote for the work. We want uh, something to show us the work that will be done, the intention of the work and the costings from that research organisation. This is, it, it, this grant is assessed, it's not just a straight up rebate. So we do have a couple of criteria that you will answer in the course of the application. It's not like other grants where it's like, we'll do a big pool of this and we'll pay out the top 10 or 20 out of a pool of 50. Uh, we assess every application as they sort of come in on a rolling basis. So if you apply today, we'll assess you know, very soon. If you apply next month, you know, in a couple of weeks time or something, we'll assess it at that time. Um, but you have to meet uh, you have to score at least three out of five for each of these three key criteria. So uh, it's not just about the quality of the sort of the research project itself, but it's also about who you are as a company and your plan to deliver and commercialise the outcome of that product, you know, the, the outcome of that research project and what that means for your product and so on. So the three criteria. Impact. The impact of your product, what's that going to do insofar as responding to COVID, health uh, impacts or economic impacts? Uh, why is it innovative? Why is this uh, particularly is something the New South Wales government should be paying uh, money towards? It's a big opportunity. Uh, what's the impact and the importance of that research uh, 
you know, the research as far as improving the product itself there. Effectiveness is a little bit about sort of your company's mm, track record of effectiveness sort of in this area. So that's whether your company has a history of delivering products like this or something similar. It might already be in market. And you're making some further modifications or improvements to it. Um, if it's a new company, a startup or something like that, if your management team, advisors or uh, network and all the rest uh, have some prior experience in business, in industry, in this sort of sector or whatever else. Um, and also, if it's, you know, if you're tech reading this level, we aren't prescriptive around this thing. It has to be at a one or two or six or a nine or whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, if it's a relatively low tech reading this level, at least helping us understanding the, the basis, the, the basis of the research you're uh, intending on doing there. And finally, delivery. It's both about delivering on the research project itself but then, as I said, it's a, it's a research project with the aim that it will help you deliver better commercial outcomes. So it's very much around your go-to-market plan. It is very much around, okay, if we deliver this and you have this great improvement, you get some great insights, clinical trials, or whatever it may be from the R&D project. Well, okay, how are you translating that? And how are you? what's your plan or approach to sort of get to market there? And also, you know, align with the organization's strategic goals. So this is supporting your core product and will improve it greatly and get to market and make a big impact, fantastic. Um, if it's sort of a bit you know, nice to have, but not an absolute must, then we'll sort of assess it accordingly. So as I said, got to pass three out of five of all these three criteria, um, but you know, there's no sort of limits there. So if we receive 40 applications and they're all great, and they all pass muster, they'll get through, they, they get paid. If we receive 40 and only five or 10 pass muster, which I don't think will be the case, um, you know, we'll pay out those five or 10 and then there'll be opportunities for other companies General advice around applications and the like. We like details, we like data, we like names of advisors, of potential customers, of potential partners. So, you know, we don't like answers like, oh yes, we have another number of great manufacturing partners and distributors that will get our product to a number of international markets. That doesn't tell us much. Tell us who the manufacturing partners are, who the distributors are, what markets you're sort of going after. If you say we've got access to a number of great advisors and, and uh, you know, people who can help us along our way, uh, you know, names and things like that do help. Uh, you know, this is about not just the R&D, but about the commercialization. So obviously a good go-to-market plan. If you have regulatory considerations, you know, you need TJ approvals or whatever else, at least give us a sense of, you know, your understanding of what you need to go through and do. Obviously, you know, we don't want this to sound like you must be a very, very mature company that's already got this all sorted and all the rest. If you're an early stage startup or something similar, at least go with your plan. What your consideration is, what you've thought through. So if we go through and we assess and we think, look, you're at early stages, but this research project makes sense for this company, makes sense for what they're trying to do, and we can see that they've thought through and they've gotten good advice on the path to market, that's what we're after. So at least, you know, if you haven't got it all sorted out yet, at least if you've got a plan, and a direction to sort of go in, that's the important piece. You've received the previous version of tech vouchers. Uh, we've done various versions beforehand. You can apply for a COVID-19 version. Uh, similarly, if you've got Innovation Connections grants for some of the work you're doing, you can also apply for this. General principle around our grants is we don't have two grants paying for the same piece of work. But if you've done phase one and phase two of some studies and trials, and you want the grant to support, which has already been covered or paid for, and you want it to support phase three, absolutely. If you've already got an innovation connections grant where, I don't know, you're looking at the impact of your uh, device or solution around respiratory problems, you've tested it against the flu, and now you're going, ooh, we can really test this against the impacts of COVID, see if there's any assistance there, we can do that. So we won't pay for the same work, but if you want to extend it, up, you know, add extra work in or something there, we can certainly look at that for the purpose of tech vouchers. Um, I will mention briefly, so we've covered tech vouchers today. We do have another uh, grant fund that will be part of the overall sort of COVID response thing that I mentioned earlier. We will do, we'll release further information later when it is open, but if you jump on the website, you'll see some information, the R&D fund, which is basically a $6 million single round competitive scheme with grants of up to a million dollars. Uh, it's large, but higher eligibility criteria with minimum sales expenditure of at least a million dollars in the last 12 months. So we're looking for bigger companies with bigger projects, with bigger impacts, but don't be confused, the focus of today is Tech Bash and the Business Research Collaboration. We will give you more information about the R&D fund when it is open for applications in the next couple of weeks, but you can find some details and guidelines on our website.
Finally, um, the easiest thing is probably just to Google tech vouchers. Uh, it comes up whether it's tech vouchers, whether you've got a space in there or not, it should be right at the top, uh, thanks to our uh, SEO and all the rest. So you should be able to find the information there, but it's the COVID-19 edition of tech vouchers on the business.nsw.gov website. Alternatively, you can contact us via the Investment New South Wales Concierge, um, just get investment.nsw.gov.au, contact us page, or their phone number there, 4908 4800. So uh, we look forward to your applications. As we said, you know, we've, we can do another 40 or 60 uh, projects or something there. Applications are currently open for the next month. So if you have been in discussions with, your, with those research organisations and you happen to be considered, we're looking forward uh, to receiving those applications. And that's me for Tech Vouchers. Uh, tomorrow, if you'd like to uh, take over for Innovation Connection. Great, thank you, Brendan. Whilst I just bring up my slides, um, there was a question, Brendan, on just clarifying the revenue and operating expenditure, I think, a question about um, whether or not startups are eligible. So, we, as I said, it's sales or expenditure. So, if you haven't yet, uh, you know, you haven't yet made to market, you haven't yet made sales, but we see that you've been investing, you know, that you've been spending money, you've been doing that research and development, you can be counted. That's why we said sales or expenditure. And, you know, because obviously, particularly if we're looking at medical devices and things like that, that can be a very long path to market. A lot of time and effort, a lot of expenditure going into it. We certainly want to be able to support those companies that haven't made it to market yet. That's why we said sales or expenditure. Great. Um, can you guys see my slides now? Can you give me a thumbs up, Brendan, if you can see my slides? Absolutely. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, Fab, hi, I'm Tamara Ogilvie. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am an Innovation Connections Facilitator, which is a program delivered on behalf of Oz Industries Entrepreneurs Program, um, delivered by the CSIRO. Innovation Connections is a potential opportunity that could um, either be an alternate or an addition to something like um, the tech vouchers to support your research and development endeavours. Um, it's a program whereby uh, facilitators like myself um, support you to understand or support businesses to understand their research needs, connect um, businesses with the right research partners from around the country within any publicly funded research organisation, and then to provide co-funding um, to support collaborative research projects that are in the interests of the business of industry. Uh, as I said, it's a national program, so um, it supports businesses to work with experts and researchers from um, any university across Australia, um, including also other publicly funded research organisations like the CSIRO. It's available to um, businesses that are potentially also eligible for tech vouchers. It does have um, different eligibility criteria to the tech vouchers though. Innovation Connections is open to businesses, Australian companies, so must have an ACN and an ABN. And it, I will um, sort of point out that it is on a per ABN basis who meet the following criteria, where there is a three year trading history and businesses are GST registered. Um, where there is a minimum turnover threshold of 1.5 million to an upper limit of 100 million, or if the business is located in remote or northern Australia, that lower threshold is lower to $750,000. And that um, threshold needs to be met in either the current or either, um, or either two or either of the previous two financial years. Um, and just like tech vouchers, that minimum threshold can actually be met with operating expenditure. So as if, if a business is um, in a pre-revenue stage or revenue hasn't quite met that 1.5, um, it, it can be also met with operating expenditure. And businesses must also operate in one of five growth sectors, advanced manufacturing, food and agribusiness, medtech and pharmaceuticals, mining equipment, technology and services, and oil, gas and energy. And there is also an opportunity for businesses who provide enabling technologies and services to any uh, of the above sectors um, to also come into the program. It is um, non-competitive, so it's an eligibility program. If a business meets those previous eligibility criteria and makes an application to come into the program, then they're in. 
it's fully facilitated once a business applies to the program. So each business is assigned a facilitator like myself, um, who is based typically in the same region as the business so that we can get to know the business and the personnel and really hone in on what the business needs and then support the business, as I said earlier, to actually find the experts that you need um, because often that can be um, a, a, a difficult or a long um, or a, a sort of involved process. So uh, we sort of can draw on our networks. Um, there are some 24, well, in the um, in my wider SME Connect team within CIRO, there's over 20 of us um, nationally. So we can draw on each other as resources to find out who, um, who are the best people that you could be talking to. And then there's, of course, dollar matched grants to support your collaborative projects, as well as end to end support um, in terms of helping you helping yourself and the research organisation to scope projects all the way through to concluding your agreements. In terms of what's available um, grant wise, there's all up $130,000 available to a business that comes into Innovation Connections. It's broken down into a few um, possible pots, I suppose, one of which is a university researcher placement that supports a business, much like Tech Vouchers, to um, sort of, uh, you know, have a scope a project with a university partner and up to $50,000 in matched funding can be um, provided to support the cost of undertaking that piece of work through the university. Um, conversely, or not not conversely, but in addition, there is also an opportunity to use one of the $50,000 grants where there is a technical team member um, within the business. It might be that you use, use one of the $50,000 grants to support your own team member to largely drive the project in-house, but where there still is a degree of collaboration with an external research partner. And then there's also what is known as the graduate placement, um, which supports a business to hire a recent graduate, anyone that's graduated within the last two years, uh, to come into the business and to um, initiate or support a research project in-house. Innovation Connections, I'll just quickly mention, also sits within um, this wider team within CIRO called SME Connect, and we deliver a number of R&D support programs, including Innovation Connections. But it's worth mentioning um, that, as I said earlier, over 20 of us deliver some uh, additional R&D support programs, including that one with the um, in the purple there, CIRO Kickstart, which is a program that supports businesses who turn over less than 1.5 or have been training for less than three years and who are interested in working with CSIRO researchers. I'll certainly include some links in the chat function as well shortly so that you've got um, a way to navigate to some of this information. That's just a few more details there on the, the screen about the CIRO Kickstart program, um, but there's similarities to both Tech Vouchers and Innovation Connections. Um, it must be a GST registered company operating within Australia. I mentioned the eligibility thresholds, but it's also a facilitated program. So there's a Kickstart team that support you to find the researchers that you that you need within CIRO. And it's a $50,000 um, up to $50,000 available there. There is um, at the moment um, uh, open for applications, um, what is called Innovate to Grow, a 10 week um, online uh, learning program for startups and SMEs um, in the agri-food space, wishing to investigate R&D opportunities in their industry. Um, applications close for that um, in October, and there are future, future rounds being planned um, for next year in cybersecurity. There was an iteration of this a little earlier in the year, focusing on cybersecurity, which was um, heavily subscribed, so that will be running again next year. Uh, it is a free program um, for businesses to uh, be support in a su very supported um, and sort of mentored way to undertake a bit of deep thinking about how they'd go about um, utilising research and development to bring innovations and solutions into their business that address industry needs. They're my details and I will copy some of those links um, into the chat function. I've sort of raced through this. We've got plenty more time for Q&A.